Thank you. Ground control to Major Tom. You're still here? <laughs> okay, someone's still here, huh? Guys, I have to tell you, we live in challenging times. On a daily basis, we hear that our planet is at the tipping point and that life on planet Earth might not be possible in a not so distant future. We actually heard it today. In the same time, Humanity is pushing the boundaries of science further and further. NASA launched their James Webb Space Telescope on December 25th of the year 2021. And since then, amazing images reach us. Images of faraway galaxies, black holes, exploding stars, and even the birth moment of our universe. And we also collect data of exoplanets. Planets where you and I could live on. Planets with an atmosphere, with flowing water and oxygen to breathe. So wouldn't it be tempting to just think that we just fly away into another world and leave this planet? Today I want to find out how easy it is to travel to other planets, stars, and galaxies, and answer the most important question, how long would it take? So let me take you on a journey through our galactic neighborhood. And what do we need for that? We need a really fast spaceship. Let's imagine our spaceship is able to travel at the speed of light. Light, that's the fastest thing there is, according to a German scientist with crazy hair. You might remember him. So we're basically traveling at the cosmic speed limit. So let me show you our itinerary through space. We will start in our solar system and fly down to Neptune, the beautiful blue planet. There we will stop to make a selfie and upload it to Instagram. After uh, doing that, we will fly to Proxima Centauri. What's Proxima Centauri? That's the closest star to our Sun. Proxima is Latin and it means the closest, which makes sense, I think. <laughs> but since we cannot land on a star, we have to land on a planet. So, there is a planet up there, it's called Proxima b. It's a rocky planet, so we can actually land there, go out of our spaceship, drink a beer and enjoy the sunrise of our Proxima Centauri. From there we will go on, still interstellar, to the edge of our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. Did you know that all the stars you see in the night sky belong to the Milky Way galaxy? So if we would switch off all the stars of the Milky Way galaxy, you would see nothing but a black sky. But there is one little cloud still up there, shining, and this is the Andromeda galaxy. So I think we also want to travel to the Andromeda galaxy. So are you ready for our first interplanetary mission. This picture has nothing to do with reality when it comes to the distances in our solar system. It's merely a representation of the packing order of the planets relative to our Sun. Normally when we talk about distances we talk about uh, kilometers or miles, but to describe the distances in our solar system we need to put in place a new unit of measure and this unit of measure is called an astronomical unit. So, what's an astronomical unit? It's basically the distance between our Sun and Earth. This is one astronomical unit. Sunlight needs eight minutes to reach us here on planet Earth. So, basically, our spaceship needs eight minutes to overcome one astronomical unit. 
So how far away is Neptune from planet Earth? It's 28 astronomical units. So you see these pictures, uh, this picture in some school books, but if you want to do it right, you need a school book with a page width of 100 meters. So this is why this is not reality. So now, how long we have to reach Neptune? It's simple math. It's 28 times 8 minutes. <laughs> okay, no, no uh, Einsteins here. Uh, <laughs> it's up to four hours. So that's easy, only four hours, the speed of light, and we reach Neptune. And I told you, we'll make a selfie. Imagine there is a window, I have to go down a bit. So, I upload it to social media, but be aware. Tell the social media manager it won't be there after, uh, until four hours have passed. Huh? Because nothing is traveling faster than the speed of light, not even a social media upload. So, we have done our first mission, now we're going to fly interstellar. Interstellar to Proxima Centauri. What you see here are the 10 stars around our Sun. One of them is the closest, and this is Proxima Centauri. So, forget everything I told you about astronomical units. Now we need a new unit of measure, light years. A light year is the distance, distance light travels within one year. So it's also the distance our spaceship is traveling. So how far away is Proxima Centauri to the Sun? 4.2 light years. Whew, gets a bit boring on this spaceship. And if you know that this line is representing 20 light years, you see, only to reach the closest stars to our Sun, you probably need more than a lifetime. But I told you, we will land on Proxima B. And this is how AI is thinking of Proxima B. Wow, beautiful planet. Look at the sunrise, it's beautiful. Or is it a sunset? I cannot tell, I cannot tell. So we will go out and have a beer, but wait, wait, stop. I haven't told you this. Um, it's actually really dangerous on this planet because there are a lot of radioactive solar winds and we might instantly die. We have to move on, guys. We have to move on to the edge of our Milky Way galaxy. You see the Sun is basically there, Proxima Centauri as well. So how long we will have to fly down to the edge of the Milky Way galaxy? We'll have another 30,000 years. Oh my God, it won't be you, it won't be me reaching the edge of the galaxy. It will be our grand, 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 grandchildren. Imagine these poor parents on the spaceship having to answer the question to their children. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. But finally, one mother is able to tell her child, yes. We are at the edge of the galaxy. But since someone really stupid planned this trip, we have to move on to the Andromeda galaxy. And how far away is the Andromeda galaxy to our home galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy? It's another 2.5 million years. This trip gets even worse. <laughs> I don't know. You know what this actually means? It means that if an alien on the Andromeda galaxy, right in this very moment, would look down on us, or up, I don't know, in a very good telescope, he would not see you, he would not see me standing here, he would see the world as it was 2.5 million years ago. So, this is you, and the first monkey human walking on two feet, that's what happened 2.5 million years ago. So this alien is actually looking back in time. 
I guess that leaves you a bit puzzled here. We have in the seeable universe two trillion galaxies with up to 400 billion stars. But even to travel to the closest stars to our sun, we probably have more than a lifetime. So I don't know what it teaches you, but what it teaches me is that there is no planet B. There is no Proxima B we can reach in a reasonable amount of time. So whatever you do with that information, at least enjoy sunlight on your skin, because it only took it eight minutes to reach you. Thank you very much. <laughs>